Maybe you're expecting someone else? I didn't think so. Welcome to math, where dreams come true. <laughs> Alright, today we're talking, we're doing lesson 2-4, by conditional statements. Okay, first let's break this fool down. First we learned about conditional statements. Okay, it means it's a condition. That means things are correct based on a condition. Like, like a girl says to you, I will date you if you start working out. Okay, so that means you get to date if you start working out. Okay, so do a couple push-up sit-ups. You're in love. Alright? So that's a condition. Like the condition for her dating you is the fact that you have to start working out. Now, what we're talking about today is called bi-conditional statements. Okay? Which means, well, first off, what does bi mean? B-I, you think of that, you think of bicycle, you think of bicentennial, you think of anything like that. What? Bi. Ah, and uh Anyways, bi means is the it's the prefix for two. Like tricycle, how many wheels does the tricycle have? Three. Three. Uh, qu uh, quad cab, how many doors does that have? Four. Four. Those are all the prefixes. Bi is the prefix for two. Okay? So therefore, bicycle means it has how many wheels? Two. Rolling on doves, as they say in BB. Um, okay? So what we're doing is bi conditional statements. So I say conditional statement is if something happens, then something else has to happen. And then that means that... If it's a biconditional statement, means that it works both ways. Okay, that means that if it works, you know, let's try. Uh, if today's Friday, then I'm playing basketball. Okay, so that means that anytime it's Friday, I'm playing basketball. Now, what that means if it's a biconditional statement means that you can switch it and it's still true. It means if I'm playing basketball, then it's Friday. Okay? That means I'm not playing basketball any other day than Friday. It means it has to be true. Now, the way you write a biconditional statement. Let's try this one that they give in the book because mine are kind of crappy. Alright? Okay, here we go. Two angles are congruent. Or, I'm sorry. You always start with the if and then then. If two angles are congruent, then... I'm going to underline if and then because they're important for conditional statements. You don't know that. Get your head right. All right. If two angles are congruent, then the two angle measures are equal. Then the angle measures are equal. Okay, congruent and equal are different. Okay, they're just they're actually the same thing, but they're said different ways. Okay, congruent is talking about angles. All right, that's ain't about sizes. Whenever. Um, Equal means like a measurement, like numbers, okay? So, if two angles are congruent, then the angle measures are equal. Is that true? Yeah, because I just told you it was. All right, now, what a biconditional statement means is we can, it's true there, and if we switch it, it's true. If the angle measures are equal, then the two angles are congruent. Is that true? Why, yes, it is. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. All right, so how do you write a biconditional statement? Easy. All you do is you drop the if, and whatever then was, you put in if and only if. Okay? That means that it's a biconditional statement. That means it's correct both ways you do that. Okay, let's do an example. All right. An angle is acute if its measure is greater than zero and less than 90. Is that true? Heck yeah, it is. All day, every day. All right. So, an angle is acute if if an angle is acute, then the measure is between zero and ninety. That's true. Switch it. If an angle is between zero and ninety, is it acute? Heck yes. All day. I didn't kick the desk. It was a sound effect. I put it in later in case I get in trouble. Okay. <laughs> now, the way you'd write that is an angle is acute if and only if. It's measured between 0 and 90. Okay? So that means it's right both ways. You can stick if and only if right there where the then was. Stick it in the middle. All right? Wow, this is a really easy section. So let's see if there's anything else you need to learn. Okay, there's a three terms you need to know. Uh, we'll cover them later, but they might use them in the assignment. Polygon. Poly means numerous. Uh, polygamy means you can marry as many people as you want. Okay? That's... Poly is a suffix for many. It's not a specific number like 15. It's anything pretty much two or more, or I'm sorry, three or more. 
That's what it is. Now what we'll use it in this class is for the word polygon. A polygon is any shape with sides that has three or more sides. That's a polygon. If they're closed in, it's straight sides. Three or more, it's a polygon. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ninety-nine, 99, 100. All of them are polygons. I don't care if it's a billion a gone. Okay, it's a polygon. Now, the two you're learning today, triangle. You've probably heard this before if you're over the age of three. Okay, a triangle looks like this. It's like a circle, but not a round. All right, and uh, so we got a triangle. Okay, it's three sides. Like a tricycle is three wheels, triangle is three sides. All right, all the interior angles of 180. You don't even know that right now. Don't worry, silly. All right, then quadrilateral is a four sided figure. Okay, triangle is three sided figure, polygon, sorry, three sided polygon. Quadrilateral is a four sided polygon. Never forget 